Everybody, hey, happy Saturday. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. Guys, thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to spend a few moments with me here on SML TV. Let's talk about it right before we talk about it. A few shout outs to you. I see my dear friend. I know Bo Allen was on here. Uh, uh, who was that? That's Zach Pilant. Hey, Zach, good to see you. There's Bo Allen there. Thank you, Bo, for being with me. Always great to see you. Ba Mumba, Ba Jackson, watching from Eastern Province, Chipata, our, our tribal cousins. We love you. You're crazy as all get up, but we love you. We have a very special place in our heart just for you. Guys, let's talk about it because I think this is, this is one of those deals that you really have to bring to the fore. You really have to put on the table because if you don't put it on the table and let people see what it is for what it is, then the public will be mis misled. The public will, will be taken the wrong way. The public will be bamboozled and, and, and hoodwinked. We don't want that. We don't want that. What we want is a clear crystal picture of what's happening on the ground. Let me begin. Let me begin, my brothers and sisters. Uh, today, we are talking about the pharmaceutical industry in Zambia. And I, I have to tell you that the Zambian pharmaceutical industry is awash with corruption because there is a group of people that feel that it is their right, their exclusive right, to have access to pharmaceutical money. As you know, the pharmaceutical uh, industry, the pharmaceutical business is a billion dollar business in every country you go to. It's massive money. And anytime you have a small group of people, a, a group, a, a special interest group that feel that it is their exclusive right to have access and to run the machinery of how pharmaceuticals are brought in, how the money is exchanged, when you have that situation, you've got a powder keg. You know what a powder keg is? You've got a diamond dynamite in your hand that is lit, and it will explode at any moment. That is where Zambia is today. We're in a mess. And let me tell you why we're in a mess. Let me break it down for you. You see, in the past, the Zambian government was buying pharmaceuticals from private Indian companies, okay? I want you to understand what that means. It means in the past, Muriba PF, now Muriba MOMUD, the Zambian government was buying pharmaceuticals from independent private Indian companies. What used to happen was, and, and I'll throw it up here for you, 
Zambian Indians. Okay, now let's let's define what a Zambian Indian is. There's, that's not a racial term. That's just that's a description. Okay, that's a noun. Okay, Asian our Asian brothers who've been born here in Zambia, they are of Asian origin, but they are Zambian citizens. We have many like that, and you know they're they're that's just the way that it is. But Zambian Indians were buying medicine from their fellow Indians in India at inflated prices. So what you had was, for example, you had the PF government, okay, at the Ministry of Health. The permanent secretary at the Ministry of Health was colluding, making deals with private pharmaceutical companies in India through the contacts here in Zambia, using the Zambian Indians here who were making contacts and deals with private Indian pharmaceutical companies to supply Zambia with drugs. That is not the way to do it. The way to do it is governments should be dealing with governments. You can't have a situation where government, through the Ministry of Health, through the permanent secretary, who makes private deals with the local Zambian Indian cartel, using their connections in India to get drugs from India at inflated prices and then bring them into Zambia. That's a cartel. That is a cartel. Now, let, let me be very clear by saying this. The regulatory body here in Zambia is called ZAMRA. Have you ever heard of ZAMRA? ZAMRA is the Zambia Medical Regulatory Authority. That authority, that body, that regulatory institution, they're the guys that make sure that the drugs are not substandard, the drugs are from the a reputable source, these guys are the eyes of the pharmaceutical industry in Zambia. These guys are the ones that say, they look at the drugs and say, okay, Panadol is good, so okay, and this Panadol will help our people. Yes, let's buy it. These are the guys who are supposed to do that. But guess what? This body here has been completely compromised by the Asian Zambian cartel. And for what? for money, in exchange for money, a regulatory body that is supposed to keep our people safe, make sure that the drugs we receive in Zambia are not substandard. If you sometimes, when you are you are black, you are fita. When you are black, after some time, you are fita. Substandard. Why? Because you've got a cartel that bribe and oil the hands of a regulatory body in exchange for making sure that this regulatory body looks the other way, they get money underneath the table, and then the Indian Zambian cartel brings in and floods our country with substandard drugs. Abama guys ukuku. On the backs of Zambians, because we have allowed substandard drugs to flood our nation at a very high price. Now, let me explain. Let me explain this. Because, you know, if, if you don't understand what you're talking about, then, then you know, you, you're just, you, you, you're not doing the right thing. Do you know that the Ministry of Health has a budget, this year, has a budget of 4.6 billion kwacha, and the Zambian Asian cartel wants all of it. They want all of it. This is the reason. When President Hagainde Hichilema 
sent the Ministry of Health along with uh, the entourage of the Ministry of Health, Health, they sent them to Egypt because they know that in Egypt, do you realize that Egypt provides more than 95% of the drugs in Egypt to their people? They've got a very powerful, very efficient pharmaceutical industry in Egypt. And so the government was trying to get into a good deal with Egypt to where Zambia, the Zambian government, deals directly with the Egyptian government because the Egyptian government deals with manufacturers. Are you getting that? This is what this administration was trying to achieve. Let me explain that again, because, you know, in Zambia, you have to constantly explain it. So let me say it again. This deal that has raised dust, this $70 million deal, and make no mistake, it's $70 million. It's not 120 million. That's just a figure that that uh, these newspapers that are politically aligned with the former regime they came up with this. I've been a daily nation. I've been a Richard Sakala Bonsiabo. Well, they, they just come up with their own figures. The real figures are seven. It's 70 million dollars that the Zambian government was trying to get into a deal with the Egyptian government because government understands. That when you come, when you, when you're dealing with the health of a nation, that's a that's a security issue. It has to be government to government. It cannot be Zambian government through the Ministry of Health, Permanent Secretary of Ministry of Health. Ele pangama phone calls, ele pangama deals. Nama independent pharmaceutical drug companies ku India through the Zambian. Asian drug cartel that is here in Zambia, and I'll name them. I'll I'll, I'll tell you who they are in, in in a moment. It shouldn't be like that. It should be Zambian government dealing with another government. In this case, the Egyptian government. Now let's let's talk about a very important uh, component to this issue, an issue that oftentimes people not only misunderstand but ignore. Let's talk about efficacy. You, are you familiar with this word, efficacy? The effectiveness of medicine? Efficacy. If a government buys medicine, that medicine has to be effective. If you don't sometimes, about to arrest a panado, headache diarrhea. While you are hospital, back to pay a panado. But it's a fide bomba. Why? Because you had a system where would it be a PF? I'm a chaps, but it's a pang. That's why HH has fired these chaps because they were doing the same thing. Even in this government, Abena George, we will pay PS, we will have a time show. No, you in a PS. This recent PS has been removed. Because of such nonsense. P.S. Now we cut a more office. You are making deals that will benefit you. So you, 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 you are in bed with the Zambian Asian cartel. And, and let me tell you, this cartel is very powerful. Basically, they run the economy. It's like the Guptas in South Africa. I'll, I'll tell you who they are. The Guptas in South Africa were, were running the South African economy in the same vein, by the same token. We've got a bunch of guys here who do the same thing, the very same thing. And they're using uh, officers within different ministries to advance their goal. Their goal is to have the whole pie. Remember, I said the Zambian budget the budget at the Ministry of Health, $4.6 billion uh, kwacha. The cartel, the Asian Zambian cartel, these guys that run, uh, uh, the, the, that get into these deals with the Ministry of Health, they want all of that money for themselves. 
and yet they are bringing in substandard drugs at an inflated price. Efficacy is nowhere to be seen. Why? Because you got a bunch of guys at the Ministry of Health. All they're concerned about is themselves. You got the, you, you have a bunch of guys at Zamra, the regulatory body that's, that's supposed to make sure that our people are safe, that's supposed to make sure that the Zambian public is getting exactly what we've, what, what we've agreed on to make sure that the drugs are working, to make sure that there is efficacy. Oh, no. These jokers. That's why HH fired them. And, and, and guys, let me explain. This is one of the reasons why it's very difficult for this administration to fight corruption because the corruption is so deeply rooted. It has become part of the fabric of our everyday lives within the government. So it's very difficult to fight corruption under these circumstances because it's like, it's, it's a malignant, it's malignant. It's spread everywhere. And, and, and I must tell you, when ba, Balungu was, was the president, this, drug, this uh, Asian Zambian cartel, and, and this is who they are. Let me, let me explain who they are so that you understand what we're talking about. The Gulams. The Gulams run IDC, you know IDC, International Drug Company? The Gulams run Nyimba milling, African milling, hunting safaris. Even this recent crisis of Mili Mail. Part of that confusion came from this group. They run the economy. And these guys, when Walungu was president, when he was leaving the presidency, President Lungu gave, he introduced the Gulams, uh, sorry, President uh, RB, let me say it right. President Rupia Banda introduced the Gulams to our Valungu. And Valungu gave the Gulams an open check. Do whatever the hell you want. Zamra compromised. Ministry of Health, Avena Chitaru Chirufia, compromised. Why? Because of money. Money. They run the economy. And Zambians are sitting there with their eyes wide shut. They take advantage of you. When now they call my offices, they'll say no. Just send them. After all, those are just Zambians. Send them those substandard drugs. They'll pay. We've got an insider. That quarter of an I've been a judge. I'm a PS. We're a Ministry of Health. Our friends are there. Now to wash stuff you won't say. Kuzamra now, but now to wash stuff you won't say. Just send those drugs. Send them. They're just there. You only say they are 4.6 billion to Allah Shidia. From a Zambian's figure. Meanwhile, the cartel. Ah, Buana ni Olo Olo. Nitwari again. So, let me. I laugh, but it's not funny. It's not funny. It is not funny. And so today, you had this Chilufya Tayali who was given half-baked information. He doesn't give you the full story. The information that Chilufya Tayali was given was given to him by people at the Ministry of Health that were frustrated with the current minister because this current minister and this current administration cannot be bought that's why and that's the reason it's important to have a a president of means you think if hh was a pauper if he was poor and he went there to state house and these chaps came to state house 
You think HH can withstand them? No, they'll buy him immediately. But they can't buy him. You know why? Because he's self-sustained. That's why. That's why. So here it is. You have this situation now where the guys within the Ministry of Health, the subordinates, I'm a, I'm a PS, I'm an officer of the Ministry of Health, after I'm a civil, back to Egypt, wanting to broker a better deal for the Zambian people wanting to broker a deal where the Zambian government was dealing directly with the Egyptian government. Not the way that it was before, where the Zambian government, through the Ministry of Health, through the permanent secretary, who was brokering private deals with private uh, 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 companies in India through the connections of this group, the Gulam group, that's wrong. Guys, understand this one thing. If you haven't heard anything I've said, Hear this one thing. Governments should be buying pharmaceuticals from manufacturers through the, the, through the government, through a, a different government. Let me say that again. Governments, the Zambian government should be buying pharmaceuticals from manufacturers with the aid of another government. Not the way we've been doing it. That's nonsense. The way we've been doing it in the past only benefits a handful of people. Can you my deals? Those are deals. <clears throat> and that should not be the case. Are you hearing that? So, you must understand that the people that have funded this Chilofia Tayali, the people that have given him this false half-baked information are people that are within the ministry that are frustrated because they don't want to deal. They don't want to be in a situation where the Zambian government is dealing with another government. No, they want to continue with this cartel because that's why. So what they do is they contact Tayali. Abena George, Abena, I'm a PS, I'm a former PS, my Ministry of Health. But I got a phone, he was tired of it. And I got information so that we all understood. I didn't know what to do. I'm with half baked information. I saw the media. Oh, I'm a woman for you. I'm nonsense. <coughs> what needs to happen, and, and we need to change the narrative. I'm telling you, this country. Imam Monakwati, Zambia is okay. We are in trouble. We are. If this cartel is not controlled, you, and this is why this administration is working tirelessly to make sure that this industry, the pharmaceutical industry, is, is, is where governments are dealing with governments, not private companies. No, no, no. It has to change, and it has to change now. Are you hearing that? All right. Cheryl, Cheryl says it's a giant cartel, and it's very hard to break down. Very true. Very, very true. Very true. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to look for a comment to, to throw up here.
All righty. Yeah. Somebody says, I have a president now. It's not easy. It's not easy. Like I said, the, the corruption is so deeply rooted that it, it, it'll, take, it'll take massive painting and broad strokes to at least attempt to ameliorate, to reduce it. But it, it's so deep-rooted, you know, and, and, and it's being done at the expense of the Zambian people. That ought not to be so. Well, hey, guys, that's what I wanted to share with you. Thank you for tuning in. See you tomorrow, Monday.